Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's fun show where we dive deeper into the robots and what makes them work. And today I'm here with team number 1511, Rolling Thunder out of Penfield, New York. 1511 dates back to the 2005 season and has had success both on and off the field. With nine regional chairman's awards, six in entering inspiration awards, two championship and three regional division wins, and many other awards to the boot. In 2020, they had a playoff bird at the, Mi at the Miami Valley Regional with a Chairman's Award as well. And as of this recording, in 2021, they have won the Quality Award for Infinite Recharge at Home, a Concept Award for the Game Design Challenge, and was recognized as a semi-finalist for the Innovation Challenge. Uh, one of their students also, Nicole, who's on here today, just got recognized as a dean Dean's List finalist as well. Congratulations, Nicole. Uh, and speaking of which, uh, from 1511 joining us is Nicole, Isaac, Nick, and Trevor. Are we diving a bit more into this modified 2020 robot? What makes it work? Of course, that power cell journey and a really, really cool driver station all here coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If your team or organization is hosting an off-season event, digitally you can stream it right here on FIRST Updates Now for free. Events that stream on First Updates Now receive an additional 25 to 100% additional viewership because we help you promote your event on a large platform. If you're interested, reach out to us on any of our social platforms, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com. Let's get your off-season event streaming on First Updates Now. Hurry, dates are booking fast, and we take first come, first serve for all our events. So Isaac, uh, we're gonna be diving in, of course, into this 2020 uh, modified robot here. Starting out, I know you wanna talk a little about your drive base and something that's unique with it. So let me know a little bit more about what's going on with that. And we're gonna be going then into, of course, the uh, full power cell journey starting with your intake. Absolutely. So starting off with our drive base, um, 1511 has created its own, uh, what we call our East Coast drive base. Um, it is a combined geared and belted drive base. We use two Omni wheels on the sides for better turning and a traction wheel in the center, so we have enough traction for acceleration. Um, with our gears, we have an 11 to 80 uh, gear ratio, giving us a lot of power and speed. It is powered by two Neos, one of which is covered up by our hang, but they're both right here, right on the other side of the traction wheel. This gives us a lot of acceleration, and I believe that we have 15 feet per second, or yeah, feet per second as our top speed. Let's continue on and keep going uh, into uh, the power cell journey on your robot. So uh, starting out with your intake. And one of the things I'd love to hear as we go through this robot is what maybe was modified from 2020 into 2021 as well. Absolutely. So actually, I have a piece of our intake from our 2020 robot. Um, so together with this, we originally had our intake cut out with pieces of Lexan just like these. Um, but... Come to 2021, we had a lot of rule changes, as you're aware, and we decided that it was smarter to cut out the front of our robot because there was no rendezvous bar. Originally, we had this roller, which we called our hot dog bar, in front of our mechano wheels to help us get the, the uh, power cells off the rendezvous bars. But because they weren't needed this year, we cut down our intake footprint for faster power cell acquisition. So dive us a bit more into the uh, intake itself. Uh, what, what else is going on uh, with it? I know you have said a bunch of mechanic wheels going into what looks like a few Omnis on there. Uh, what kind of motors are being used for it? And is that intake actually able to come up and down during a match or does it just drop down and stay there? So our intake has been designed to stay inside frame parameter, but to get the power cells, we had to flip it down. Um, this is done using a Neo 550, which you can see here spinning. And then it is powered by another Neo 550, which is back here. Um, this is our power belt here, running back. And then our pivot here um, is, also, is controlled by an optical sensor. So we can see this white piece of tape, and we know it's up. Um, we, we went for the mechanical design to keep it really close to the robot. That way, it didn't get damaged. Um, Using our mechanic wheels, we keep friction right up with our bumpers. We had very specific spacing we worked out so that it would travel sideways, um, which 
we'll show you once we demonstrate it. Um, we did this because of our helix design. We wanted to get our balls all to one side of the robot, and this was the most efficient way to do so. In addition to our mechanum wheels and our omnis, there's a pair of beam brake sensors here. You'll notice that the LEDs counted up when we intake. That is because we have a ball counter for our drive team, and that is when the power cell breaks the beam here, and our coating then turns on the LEDs. Oh, that's really cool. I love. I always love when you can have that great communication to your drive team so they don't have to think, right? The, the goal is you want them to go as quickly as possible, doing as much as possible. Uh, so I think that's really great that your team has added that as well. Uh, let's continue on and going over to Nick, uh, who's going to be talking about, uh, of course, the Spindexer. I'd love to see more about that. Uh, so, of course, the uh, power cell storage. And then going into your shooter, Nick, uh, tell us a bit more about it. Okay, so um, our Helix, uh, which is our ball storage mechanism, uh, obviously gets fed in from the intake and it has a kind of corkscrew uh, type of piece of Lexan that guides the balls up. And then on the inside, we have uh, brushes that also help move the balls along. And from there, we have our what we call our handoff roller. Um, and that sits inside the shooter that kind of gets the balls uh, going in the right direction and moves them into the shooter. And then from there, we have our primer right there which kind of gets them up to speed, a little, spinning a little bit faster. And then right here, we have our Fairlane wheels, which we are using as flywheels, that once the prime ball is primed and ready to go, it shoots out nice and fast like the, way, like, like the way we want it. And then coming over here, we have a potentiometer and our new higher torque servo, because with our adjustable hood, which moves up and down, so we can adjust the angle as we're shooting for short shots and long shots, we realized we needed a lot of torque to get the full range of motion on our gearing. So we did a lot of research trying to find the amount of torque that would get us there. And turns out this servo has way more torque than our original bracket um, was designed for. So we had to design something a little bit more heavy duty because it kept snapping because it was just so powerful. And then over here, we have our new potentiometer because we were just going off of the servo for our position of the shooter. And then we realized that wasn't very accurate, especially for the skills challenges. So we did a lot of research with the potentiometer, found one that was like, I believe, three turns to keep it very accurate and precise for our uh, shooter. And to work with the lights, we have another beam break here um, right as the ball leaves the shooter. So the drivers are still updated as to how many are in the system. So uh, we have our limelight uh, vision system, which allows us to see the reflective tape on the power port and allows us to line up. And that also coincides with something that we've been working on, which is our turret. And we didn't decide to implement it in 2020 um, at our first competition because we wanted to implement it really well and we couldn't do that at our first competition. So we were kind of working on that. And especially with the skills challenges being over, we were able to spend a lot more time on development with that. So what eventually it's going to do is the turret is going to move uh, with the limelight targeting system. So then we don't actually have to move the robot and the whole turret will move and it'll allow us to improve our cycle times and aim faster and easier. So uh, as you shot, saw when it uh, was shooting, the, those primers got up to speed and what they do is they keep the ball uh, moving and um, rolling and spinning until uh, the fair lane wheels get up to speed and then the fair lane wheels take over once they hit the required speed. Uh, so Nick, thanks for uh, taking the time to tell us more uh, about that. We're gonna go next over to Nicole, who's gonna be talking about the climber uh, on your robot. Um, so, you know, of course with 2021, the at-home uh, challenges, we didn't have anything to climb, but we still love the feature and focus on the 2020 capabilities. So Nicole, tell us a little bit more about uh, the climber on your robot and how it worked out for your robot. Yeah, so this is my prized possession on the robot. Uh, this is the uh, sub-mechanism that I worked on the most. Uh, and it is two telescoping arms. Uh, they're almost centered on a robot. They're more centered based off of our center of gravity. Uh, and they're connected across the top with this cross beam. Uh, we use constant force springs to bring our um, robot up to the bar. Uh, when it extends, the constant force springs contract. And um, it's all pulled with a, rat with a um, winch at the bottom that has a cable. Uh, and when we winch that up, uh, we have a ratchet and pawl brake that becomes disengaged, so it freely can spin. And then when we want to um, actually pull ourselves onto the bar, the uh, brake uh, 
enables itself so we can't come crashing down. Uh, so we can demonstrate that in a second if that's all right. Yeah, let's see it actually go, go up. I'd love to see how that works. So you can see our hooks flip up. And there she is. Um, the reason that we have our hooks flip up at the beginning is that if we didn't, it would interfere with our shots. So we have some torsion springs up here at the top that allow us to retract down into the robot before we launch. Yeah, you totally answered my question there. I was gonna, I was going to, I was asking, we're going to ask why that is the case. So uh, tell me a little bit more about those hooks. What is the material uh, actually on those hooks? Like from my perspective, almost like 3D printed. <laughs> and you would be right. So these are our custom designed um, 3D printed hooks. We went through six different iterations to make sure that these bad boys were just right. Uh, they are printed out of ABS, which has been perfectly strong enough. We've been able to, hook, to hang even on one hook, um, which is kind of surprising considering the fact that these are plastic. Yeah. Uh, but the way that we designed them, it all worked out. And you can see under here, we have some rubber just to prevent it from sliding across the bar. Um, so those are our hooks. And they're attached to this wobbly bar, which you can see is, which actually will probably show better when we actually hang. Um, it, there's some Lexan springs here on the bottom. So when we hang and the bar is uneven, uh, we can tilt our robot um, to account for that. And we have another part of our um, base arms that also accounts for getting hit or coming in and swinging. Uh, we have gas shock springs at the bottom. Um, so this always makes sure that our um, hang mechanism is upright. So, there's that. Um, I want to go back real quick to the uh, to the hooks on there. Have you load tested those or anything, or or done like a a, a, a torsion test or anything like the the C where where it actually breaks or because I'm sure with all the different loads, not just you know weight straight down, but you know there's a bunch of different factors that go into that. How did you test that you were actually confident those would work? Uh, yes, yeah, so we did a lot of testing in CAD. Um, we did we do um, uh, say we have like good safety factor on these um and yeah we just do a ton of testing in cad and then in real life and the reason that we've made so many uh modifications is not only for like ease of driver use and like able to, ability to line up uh, but because we needed stronger safety factors um so that's how these came to be uh, that's really cool that might be uh I, I'm trying to think of any other robots I've seen that had a 3D printed uh, hooks for their climbers. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, so thanks a lot, Nicole, for telling us about that. Uh, we're going to keep continuing on uh, next into Trevor, who's going to be talking about uh, your control panel manipulator that you have. Uh, and then, of course, going into the driver station that we've hyped up a little bit. Uh, so start us off with the control panel, and then I can't wait to see what you guys have for driver station as well. So this is our control panel off the back of the robot, and it is a color sensor with a with two we, two sets of wheels in the in a motor so that it will it can spin the wheel and it's attached with lexan at the bottom as well so that you can you don't have to worry about crashing into the wall or something else and it is able to track the color via the color sensor and move it to the appropriate location by tracking how many times it sees a color and once it's seen it's the same color six times, it knows it's moved it three times for position control, for position control, and for, or sorry, for rotation control. And for position control, it's able to tell what color it's at, and then it calculates what color it needs to go to as well to get the proper color on the robot. I want to keep moving on because I'm very excited to see this driver station that I got a little sneak peek of before it started on here. Uh, but this is really cool. The aesthetics of the driver station that you have is really neat. Um, so I, once we get that in frame, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, some of the, the concept and design behind it. Uh, and then how it's actually uh, what the usability is for your drive team as well, too. It's, you know, it's one thing they have something that's aesthetically pleasing. It's another thing that uh, where the drive team actually says, yes, this is valuable to have. So talk to me a little bit more about this uh, really cool driver station that we have just come in the frame now. So our driver, st driver station is set up with a metal box, if you will, with the laptop sitting on top of it. And it's split onto two sides. One side here with a bunch of broken switches so that the drive team can change anything. If any of the sensors breaks or any of the motors, if something bad happens in competition, then one of these switches will usually help fix it as so a short term. It's solution. like an override almost. Yeah. It'll ensure because our robot is fitted with all the sensors to help it so that it won't break itself. But if we need to, we can turn off sensors via 
this side. And then the other side is made purely for cosmetics, where we have a lever that will change different colors and then buttons that can change the settings of the robot. And what the drivers end up using is they use um, Xbox controllers. So we have driver controls and Xbox controllers and aux controls. And the driver one is the black one, the aux is white. And we decided upon Xbox controllers because they would be, we wanted ease of driver use. And we thought that these would work very well and they accomplish the tasks that they need to while also being able to, you can move them around everywhere and you can sit in a chair easily or you can stand up and you can do, the driver can do whatever the driver wants to do with the robot. Before we wrap up, I, I actually want to go back to the uh, override controls that you have on there. So I, I find that really interesting that you have. So the, the operator itself is doing everything from one of the Xbox controllers, uh, but you have these override controls on a separate panel. What made you think about doing a separate panel for that or uh, maybe not just having all the operator functions controls on that panel? Um, we thought that for the aux controls, the controller... The Xbox controller is mainly used for things that you're going to need in-game while you're doing the competition, whereas the things that go on the override controls will hopefully not be used at all, but they're there just in case. So if you're going to need to flick one of the switches, then you're not going to need to often flick the switch, whereas we decided to put, so we decided to put them out of the way on here rather than trying to make more space on the Xbox controller. And we wanted to save the Xbox controller for things like hang or shooting so that you don't have to flick a switch to do that and you can have the ease of use of an Xbox controller. Well, Trevor, I really appreciate you uh, showing this off. I love uh, nice aesthetic systems, of course, some nice functionality that comes as well, too. Uh, so 1511, thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak to us about your robot and your team. Uh, really cool stuff you got going on. Uh, of course, you know, other stuff we didn't mention is all the success you've had off the field as well, too, with your multiple chairman's award, entering and inspiration awards, and of course, the awards that you've won uh, this year as well. So thank you for taking the time to talk to us about your robot. And uh, good luck, of course, uh, if you get a chance to play in any competitions uh, throughout the rest of this year. But of course, we look forward to seeing your team in future years as well. Thanks a lot for taking the time. Thank you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the join button and just for a few bucks a month, you unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and first updates now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.